It's anti-Babylon. <laughs> uh, last night I was, uh, I got a call from Archangel and uh, he said, hey, I uh, got my antenna up, uh, you want to try to make contact? And so I got up on uh, 40 meters with him and, and I could talk to, um, I could talk to a guy in, in Dallas and another guy in Kentucky and I could hear a guy in, in Andover, Minnesota, uh, very, very faintly, and he could barely, barely, barely hear me, but not really well enough to uh, be able to tell what I was saying. I was way, way back in the background. And I, I actually talked to a guy in San Antonio, Te or I'm sorry, Austin, Texas. So I was getting out there um, <clears throat> with uh, the new antenna that I just built the other day. Um, but I'm still not getting a proper NVIS um, propagation because that's what I really want to do is get the uh, near vertical incident skywave uh, propagation where I'm just bouncing down off the ionosphere, bouncing down just to my local like 300 mile, 400 mile radius. That's what I'm looking for. So um, Archangel suggested I try building a 75 meter antenna. So that's what I'm going to do today. Okay, it's anti Babylon. You see, I have my wire and my tape measure end clamped to something solid. Archangel sent me an email said, Hey, make sure you cut it a little longer so that when you fold it back on itself and twist it for the ends, that it ends up being 65 feet. So I'm going to cut it 65 feet plus 3 inches so that when I fold it back, it'll end up being 65 feet. I hope you understand that. So uh, I'm going to cut it at 65 foot 3 inches, twice. I'll have two of them. my uh, so wire cutters in my pocket, and here I go. Going to 65 feet, 3 inches. So I just cut the first one, and now I'm going to cut the second one. So <laughs> five foot three. Hey, it's Aunt Babylon. I'm back. I'm back. All right, I got the clamp. The wires, here's the two ends of the lines, set one side there. Now remember we made it three inches too long. Remember, so that's right there is the actual 65 foot mark. That's where it is 65 feet long. Ugh. Ugh. All right, 65 foot long. Okay. Now we got to fold this back on itself. I'm gonna strip it back three more inches. We're at 65 here, and now I got it in a loop, and now uh, I'm going to twist this on itself. Bam. Lovely doubly. Did you see that? Huh? You see that? Okay. Ooh. Now I'm going to solder all that. Make it hard and fast. <clears throat> Put that there so you can see it. So, how do you solder it? You might want to tin your your solder. You can tin your soldering iron. There you go. Now you, you put your. I got this soldering iron at Radio Shack for, for it's a 40 watt soldering iron. I like it a lot. <clears throat> Get your wire hot. Touch a, a little solder to your soldering iron. Now you want to uh, put the solder on the wire itself, on the soldering iron. You heat the wire up, and then you touch the solder to the wire. You heat the wire up, then you touch the solder to the wire. You 
You don't put the solder on the soldering iron and then ask it to flow down onto the wire. You heat the wire up and then you put the solder on the wire. Metal, when it gets really, really hot and becomes into a liquid state, seeks out heat. It will flow towards heat. It's an amazing thing. But I'm, I'm not touching the iron at all. I'm touching the actual wire with my solder, but the wire is hot enough. I'm going to pull that 40 meter dipole down and bring it in here and I'm gonna well, I'll bring the center of it in here and I'm gonna solder the other ends of these wires to that center of that 40 meter thus turning that 40 meter dipole into a multiband 40 slash 80 center of the 40 meter right <clears throat> Got my glasses on again. Hoo -wee -wee -wee. Now I gotta run these leads in here. I think I'm gonna run this one. Let's see. I'm gonna go like this. Uh, I'm trying to figure out ways to do like strain relief on these things. Going like this and like this. There we go. And then I'll strip it and I'll solder it on there. Okie doke. You just need to strip a little bit is all, right? Just a little bit. Let's uh, get this tinned up. They call it tinning it whenever you like put just a little bit of solder on the existing, on the lead, you know? All right, let's get some heat on there. Let's tin that line, tin it, there it is. All right, there we go. Doop doo doo. Ooh, look at there. That, oh, whoa. Mm -hmm. Luckily I got the, got the solder on there. See how it did it move or anything? No, it's fine. Okay, 80. It's stuck to the 40. Mm. Clamp it. Solder it together. Are you learning from my mistakes? I sure hope so. Who am I? Nobody. I'm not like uh, these hands on the internet. I'm not like Gordo. I don't have a Heil microphone. Ow, that was hot. And here we go. I think in there. It's in there. And done. Hold it to be still. Be still and hold it, I mean. All right, the solder's set up. Ta da We have a dual band antenna. trying to get it stretched out, you know? It's just so freaking long and it's all twisty-like and it tries to trap itself on itself. It's really aggravating, I gotta tell you. It's really aggravating. See how twisty-twisty it likes okay. to get? I don't know if the timer indicator is on this tape, but it is a few hours later. Uh, probably three hours later. I don't know what time it is. It's, it's quite a bit, considerable time later. Uh, Hanging a dual band dipole is significantly different than hanging a single band dipole.